Katz. And me, Sandy Neal. We have lots of interesting news for you to read and photographs for you to look at this week. And remember that we enjoy hearing your stories and seeing your photographs as well. You can call The Oban Times on 01631 568 000, email editor at obentimes.co.uk or message us on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. We've been featuring some of your photos on our social media channels recently, so keep sending them in. But what stories do we have for you this week in our newspaper and online? Kathy, what have you been finding out about? Well, three cheers for Toba Mori's new Scout Hall. Hip hip hurrah! Times three. So it's officially open after decades of planning and one huge, mega, ginormous community effort. So this is an inspiring and heartwarming tale of people on Mole coming together to make what might have seemed a mighty Mission Impossible possible. So Sunday, it was the official opening, there was a blessing, there was a a big Piper-led parade, there was more than 100 people of all ages who all went along to see the hall in all its glory. And they actually call it the New New Hall, because I think this is the third time round that a hall's been sort of built, or at least renovated, on the same footprints opposite the uh, county buildings there. So it's a lovely story. It's cost about £170,000 to build. A lot of that's come from grants. But you know what? There's been a lot of hard work and efforts put into actually from the community to get the funds together and actually to do all the digging work and all the joinery and everything. We've even had like former scouts and people who were there involved in the original building of the hall in 1969 who've been back to sort of lend a hand as well. So it's so lovely and we've got some great photos. So have a look at that in the OT or read about that online. I've also been chatting to a GP called Yelta Danhoff, who lives on Seal, and she's just run the Tokyo Marathon to fundraise for a charity helping people with blood cancer. Now, Yelta was also celebrating five years of herself being in remission from the disease. She did incredible. Thanks to scientists who invented the combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy that treated her rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, she is now able to do her bit to increase awareness and raise funds to help save more people like her so uh, check that out in this week's ot and or go online see how you can support her because next up is the london marathon in april also hundreds of people have been responding to a survey exploring options to create new crofts across mull and iona so mull and iona community trust say uh, it was overwhelmed by the number of people who were interested and got involved giving feedback nearly 300 people of them did that and that is proof that people are genuinely excited about the possibility so uh, there we go that was a survey online and it seems that most people were looking for about three to six hectares of land while most of them want to rear livestock stock grow crops or and or plant trees more than one third would think about moving or starting a business on the croft land such as accommodation or ecotourism arts and crafts or food and drink enterprises lots of ideas there two thirds of them wanted to be able to build a home on a croft oh something we all dream of and a further 23 percent would like to rent one there we go Thanks for that, Kathy. Some, some really good, nice, feel-good stories there. So thanks for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's uh, what we want. Exactly. Feel good. You're going to spoil it now, aren't you? You're going to bring us bad news. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not too madly. But you can read all of the stories that Kathy mentioned in this week's newspaper, which you can pick up at local garages and shops. And you can also read them at www.obentimes.co.uk. What about you, Sandy? You're not a way to bring the mood down, are you? Well, I'm afraid it is something like a bad news sandwich where we start with good news <laughs> and then we've got the bad kind of filling in the middle, which has got a distinctly sort of ferry kind of taste today. So ongoing ferry disruptions are taking a psychological toll on islanders. You can find out more about that. But, oh, here we go. Here's some, well, seemingly some good news. The council has agreed to keep funding Jura's vital passenger ferry between Tevialich and Craig House after islanders fought tooth and nail for a decision with just weeks before the seasonal service starts. However, there are still some T and C's to work out. A Connell Primary School is moving closer to closure, unfortunately, after 18 months being mothballed. Councillors will be asked to give the green light to education officials to begin drawing up a draft closure proposal for Achaleven Primary. There's progress and problems to report over Oban Bay and the council's plan to take control. 
A bid by Highlands Rewilding to buy the Tavialic estate has raised the £10 million price tag to seal the deal, bringing relief to tenants who feared losing their homes and jobs. And we hear from a survivor of the last Calmac ferry to have sunk for the first time in print. Finn, over to you. Thanks very much, Sandy. And you'll be shocked that I bring news and another update on the deposit return scheme. This time we've been hearing from West Coast drinks producers who have registered for the scheme. You can read all about that and our previous reports on the controversial scheme on our website. An Oban man has also embarked on an epic cold water swimming challenge for Cancer Research UK. Paul Evans is entering the water every day this month for a great cause which is close to his heart. You can find out how to donate to this and give Paul your support in the paper and online. And who doesn't love a story about a sunbathing walrus? Well, the massive creature was spotted by a creel fisherman off the west coast of Mull last week. An exciting and potentially terrifying sighting. In the sport, we have all the action from the shinty as the season started at the weekend, with Oban Kamenak and Oban Celtic both picking up draws in their opening fixtures. The achievements of the young Oban Otters swimmers were also recognised at a prize giving at The View on Friday, and we have the latest from John McPhee, who is racing in Indonesia. We also have the rugby roundup with Oban Lauren senior men and their under 15s putting in solid performances in defeat as the women's match was unfortunately cancelled. And you can read more sport and all the stories we have discussed in this week's newspaper, which will be available in shops and garages from Thursday or online at www.obentimes.co.uk. For now though, it's goodbye from me, Finn Nixon. And goodbye from me, Cathy Griffiths. And goodbye from me, Sandy Neal. Bye. 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 Bye.